So this movie is huge for you. It's your first big feature film. Um, but the idea all started when your son accidentally threw a baseball at your head and you had to go to the hospital. Yeah, well that's the urban lore and it's true. It's true. It was my screw this moment in motherhood, I think. It was like I felt very jarred and mm -hmm. I felt um, that I wanted to um, go run and screaming into the night. And I was sort of pathetically you know, yelling at my kid. and midway through it was such a dramatic thing that was going on I sort of realized I needed to get a hold of myself so the next week or something I started to sit down and write I'd had this character in my mind mm. for a while. Stacey had gotten in touch with me um, we hadn't seen each other we've known each other for like 20 years but we haven't seen each other for like 10 and um, and she was like I wrote a script will you read it and I'm like you know, I very much believe in, in, in mentoring and, and, and helping mm -hmm. people along with this process that can sometimes be difficult. So I was like, sure, yeah. Um, and I read the script, um, and we met to, to do a note session, you mm -hmm. know, went through the script. And she's like, is this a go? And I was like, yeah, I think so, but in a go, a go in a way that would be a very, very cheap independent film. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just gonna get rolling. And she's like, all right. So she's like, I need to read the script. And then she asked me if I wanted notes on the script, and I said, of course, and I felt like I maybe had her at that point. I thought maybe she'd executive produce, but she became such an integral mm -hmm. collaborator on the film that there was that she she eventually just took the sole producing credit mm -hmm. on the film. Well, you had the film Go Fish, the mm -hmm. made in 1994, which is kind yeah. of known for being this huge indie in the 90s. Uh, so how was uh, making that film in comparison to Concussion almost you know 20 years later? Yeah. It felt almost like this weird full circle thing. Mm -hmm. You know, on this, it's like I feel like everybody wrote the script and everybody was sort of like, okay, this is what we're doing and we're gonna mm -hmm. be kind of proud of it. And, and it was a very young crew. Um, and so there was a certain level of enthusiasm um, in that way. And then we also sort of architected the film. It, you know, Stacy deliberately kept, you know, um, uh, the locations down. We deliberately, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, there were, there were places we used my house, her house, like, um, um, you know, sort of friendly spaces where we didn't, you know, I mean, it was, it was a true indie. Yeah. Um, I mean, I noticed that I'm like, okay, you've got one scene in a cafe or a few scenes in a cafe in New York and a gym. Yeah. Other than that, and it's, it's all just... friends who knew, like, you know, it's like yeah. friends, like favors called in, you know, calling in favors. And things like that and, and you know um, there was a lot of goodwill. So there are some really intimate sex scenes in the film um, and I'm always curious what the role is as a director um, and a lot of times it is a man directing you know a heterosexual couple but for you it was you and women and it's interesting that your DP was a man. Yeah. Um, so what role did you play? Did you kind of step back or did you choreograph or how did you create a comfortable environment? Um, it was different for each of the scenes and there are quite a few um, I guess I would say scenes of intimacy because many scenes are not explicit in the film. Right. Um, I just approached the whole thing as one long sexual experience. You know, I thought, you know, her like her first, the first one was like a, you know, she 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 moved from like this stone like person to this to this kind of accessing her animal mm -hmm. self. So you know, at, at the beginning when she's with that 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 good hooker Gretchen, she's sort of right. like stone and she's sort of pulling her to her like a walker. And you know, I I um, I approached that. With, I did approach that scene with direction. Some scenes I didn't approach with any direction at all, and I just let the actor work, which mm -hmm. is very important. The, the scene where she's hit by the woman, um, those two actors are, you know, very... I, Robin and Erica Lada... Erica is a performance artist, and so Robin thought because she's also a dancer that dance might be their way in. So they, they, I sat on an Apple box and watched them do the Grotowski so method for like 20 minutes. And, uh, you know, yeah. it, it, you know, and I, I had the camera running and David stripped down the camera to its widest available, you know, ability and just moved around so them. Great. And we got beautiful, beautiful stuff. Mm -hmm. And I like doing it. I like doing it that mm -hmm. way. Um, not for certainly for every every scene, but I found that that was the best way to control it. So you were at Sundance mm -hmm. 20 years ago, mm -hmm. almost 20 years ago, and then you went back, and then the Weinsteins came on board to distribute the film, which is mm -hmm. sort of an indie filmmaker's dream. So tell me about being at Sundance and having them come on board and how this all came about. We had a first screening, and then within 48 hours we had sold 
uh, both internationally and um, um, <laughs> yeah, and, and domestically. We had we had um, done deals, um, and and that was just that was just incredibly dreamy. And and you know, within the first night, I remember Stacy and I were having like we were at that lodge and like um, we were having like a like a nightcap, and and I got the first phone call, and I like went out to this little area, and I was just like, who and who and who, <laughs> you know? And there were like four like kind of offers, and it was just it was sort of incredibly wonderful to be in that sort of um it, it's so competitive mm -hmm. and i had such a belief in this film i always knew i wanted to go to sundance mm -hmm. we had we shot in in sort of before we shot before we ended shooting before 2013 we were just mm -hmm. right up to the holidays almost and um and i remember saying you know like we're gonna go to i want this to go to sundance i want to do sundance in berlin and stacy's like that Sundance is like eight months away. Like, what are you I'm not doing this film? And I'm like, let's. I just think it's the best place for it. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, and I really feel that strongly. And I think as filmmakers, you have to you have to, you know, Sundance isn't the best place for every film. Absolutely not. I think that I think that you have to look at what you have and then look at the market. Look at where the best market is going to be for you to what the yeah. best festival to launch. It might be Toronto instead. You know, there are definitely like you can you can see trends with certain places. So, was there anything that was cut from the film that was you know a darling you had to kill, or for the rating? Um, I'm just curious what we didn't see because I know I watching it, I'm like there's there was so much more that that just didn't make it into the movie. Um, I wanted to make a three hour movie. I did. I felt like her journey. <laughs> Should, you know, I'm a big fan of the long movies, a uh, big fan of Chantal Ackerman, and, um, and it just didn't serve the piece, you know? Mm -hmm. I, Rose would say, you know, if you want two people to see it, make it three hours, you know? Um, but I have also found that um, that wasn't also a pragmatic note, that was also, or a practical note, that was also a note of artistry, too, because she felt that... Um, so much was happening in the ellipses already with Robin's performance that it wasn't necessary. It wasn't necessary. You know, we're in a we're in a world now where, as filmmakers and producers, you have to be very, very aware of what you're. You know, and, and people don't like to talk about films as as products mm -hmm. or anything because it's gross. It sounds like cheap. It cheapens it. But if you are not going to look at it and look at the marketplace and look at where your niche is for your film or how to, how to expand that in like the case of like mm -hmm. something like concussion, then you're, then you're, it's not, it just doesn't happen. It, you have to be the architect of it yeah. in some kind of way, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Cause I think that, the, I think that it's a possibility to have a sustainable career in film and not just be like the 1% that gets plucked out and like, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to do the next Batman movie or, you, just you know. You need to do seminars all over the place yeah. about <laughs> coming from being an indie filmmaker and now being a producer. So, yeah, yeah. Well, thank and, you so much. Yeah, this you're is welcome. fantastic. Yeah. Check out Concussion Guys. It's out yes. next week. Yes, October 4th. October 4th. Mm-hmm.